Hey Church family, Pastor John here bringing you the weekly Touchpoint video. Um, today is May 16th, 2024, and our Points to Ponder article um, today is titled, Living Stories of Grace, Sharing Your Testimony. Stories are powerful. We are drawn to and shaped by them. We are surrounded by them. We love to listen to them, and many of us love to share them. What was the last story that deeply impacted you? Maybe it was a recent movie you watched. Maybe it was that new song your favorite artist just released. Maybe it was a dear family member or friend sharing what has been going on in life. Stories are powerfully impactful. And I was reminded of this reality during this last month on the bike trail near where I live. I had a moment to... I had a moment to connect with a stranger while on my bike ride. It all started after coming to stop, an opening question she asked about the weather, and eventually led to sharing the stories of our lives. Uh, she began with sharing her life story with me. She shared some of the hardships and joys she had experienced and currently experiencing. When she finished sharing, she turned to me and asked something along the lines of, Now, what's your story? If you were asked this today, where would you begin? What would you share? What moments would you highlight as the most significant? As I began to share parts of my story with this new friend, I quickly came to realize again how my life has a single thread holding it all together. With everything I shared, my life was tracing the grace that God has shown to me and my family. I got to share my testimony of how God saved me in high school and the circumstances that surrounded that time. I got to share about how God had saved my family just a generation before me. I got to share about how the good news of Christ radically changed my heart and how eventually the Lord led me into pastoral ministry, which brought me to the foreign Midwest land of Kansas City. Long story short, as the Lord opened an opportunity for me to share my life story with this new friend, I found an even greater opportunity to share briefly the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel's impact in my life. You see, our testimonies are significant. Not because we're so great, but because Jesus is great. So, if given the opportunity, how would you share your testimony or your story of his grace? Who or what uh, would be central to your story? During my time in seminary, we had to take a required evangelism course. My professor at the time had us do a very practical assignment to write out our testimony, memorize it, and share it. We did just that, and at the end of this assignment, we all grew in our own depth of the gospel through one another, and our depth of our love for one another grew. My professor, referencing Will Metzger's Telling the Truth, gave us four points to consider in our testimonies. I pray that these would be helpful as you think upon and share the astonishing grace of God through the context of your life with those God has brought into your life. Many of us may be unable to point to a radical conversion, but this does not mean your testimony is less meaningful or significant. All testimonies uniquely point to the miracle that salvation is, being born again by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. And so with each of these four sections, I've left a few example phrases, and I'll have some pauses here in the video, that may be helpful starting points. The first point, what was I, what I was like? Some helpful example phrases can be, my family, friends, interests were, my security or, or most, most important value was, my religious background and attitude toward God was, you fill in the blanks there. Point two, what God used to begin to open my eyes. Here are some example phrases. I was awakened to my need by, and you can list here various people or books, meetings, circumstances, the list goes on. What I thought and or noticed about myself about God, about others, at this point was, and you fill in the blanks there. Point three, what it was I saw or understood. What were those aspects of the gospel that touched you or that impacted you? 
You could even use phrases like, I came to understand that Christ, you could fill in the blank there. I saw my need was, you fill in the blank there. Point four, how Christ has and or is affecting my life. And some example phrases here can be, my relationships with, my attitude toward, my desires now are, I'm now doing, and the difficult area still is, once again, you can fill in all the blanks here. And these are just example phrases to go along with these four main points. What I was like, what God used to begin to open my eyes, what it was that I saw and understood, especially of the gospel and of Christ, and how Christ has and is still affecting my life. Getting to share briefly our life stories with others can be great doorways to greater and deeper spiritual conversations. You see, in sharing our, your testimony, it is so much more than how the gospel fits into your life story, but it is also about how you ultimately fit in God's grand redemptive story. And as you think through your testimony, take time to praise God for his glorious grace in your life. As you share your testimony with the body of Christ, may the Lord use your story to encourage our brothers and sisters in the faith. As you share your testimony with those who don't know Christ, may God use your story to stir spiritual interest and point them toward Christ. Once again, your testimony is significant because it points directly and uniquely to the reality of God's saving grace through Christ. The Lord has been behind every moment and detail of your life, and he is presently working in you now. What a joy it is to tell others of the hope we have in God's wonderful work of redemption. This concludes our Points to Ponder article for this week. Uh, just a few highlights for us to, to think through. Once again, please be praying for our missionaries of the month. John and Jessica, Jessica Cropsey, uh, as they continue to fight needless blindness in East Africa. And they are uh, continuing with that new project that they started with Surge uh, called I Love Africa. And so would you continue to keep them in your prayers? We've got quite a, a handful of highlights to, to keep in mind for this week in the life of Oak Hills. Uh, the first is that Sunday school um, will be... We'll be uh, the last spring semester classes will be this coming Sunday, May 19th. Afterwards, we'll take a break for the summer and we'll resume uh, once the fall hits again. So please keep that in mind that if you're wanting to make your way out to Sunday school, uh, this coming Sunday will be the last of our spring semester. Um, we've got our men's ministry kickoff barbecue this Friday uh, at Roy Heinbach's place at 6 p.m. So we hope to see the men there for that. We have our senior lunch in uh, this coming Friday as well on May 17th, and they'll be at noon here at the church. Um, and, so f um, and then also for our church, we've got quite a bit of things going on in terms of places we might be able to share our testimony um, and, and maybe see those doors opening. Uh, one of that could be this Saturday, we have a church neighborhood prayer walk um, this Saturday, May 18th at 11 a.m., and that should conclude around 11.45 a.m. Um, please feel free to bring your family, a dog. We'll simply be walking around our neighborhood here at the church and, and, and praying together, uh, praying for God to do um, and, and continue to do the work that he's been doing in our neighborhood surrounding our church. And so we pray that God would continue to use our church uh, to proclaim the gospel and to be a blessing to our surrounding neighbors here. So we hope to see you there. Um, and as we pray for that as well, we have some events coming up to keep on our radar that are approaching very, very quickly here soon. We've got our block party on Saturday, June 1st, uh, from 4.30 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. We still need quite a bit of folks to help out with this. Uh, the volunteer and sign-up sheets have been sent out. Um, the links can also be found in the, the touch point email that goes out as well as in our bulletin. So please make sure to sign up that if that's on your radar, we, we can use all the help that we can have uh, to make this such a wonderful event for both our church family, as well as uh, reaching out and connecting with our neighbors here as well 
on June 1st. And we also have Joy Plosion coming up as well from June 4th to June 6th. This is our version of Vacation Bible School. And so uh, this is for uh, four-year-olds all the way through fifth grade. And once again, I think uh, Pastor Dale touched on this in our last touch point is we're praying that 50% of our Joy Plosion program will be those who um, are not here at Oak Hills, that we love having these programs for our children here at Oak Hills, but we also want to use and, and, and see Joy Plosion be an avenue where we can reach out to families uh, that uh, either we invite, that we know of, or even here in our neighborhood that we may even be able to meet at the block party to invite them here. So we, we pray for that. And would you pray with us uh, for that? Um, but we have registration that is open and you can access that registration through the touchpoint links, through our, uh, our website, um, as well as emails that have been sent out as well. Um, and we need volunteers for that as well. Joy Pollution cannot run um, apart from all of our adult volunteers. So that will be from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. from June 4th to June 6th, Tuesday to Thursday. Um, please have those on your calendars. Be thinking about and be already inviting those um, who, who come to mind uh, for these various events. But with that, um, yeah, we hope, we hope that you have a great rest of the week and look forward to worshiping with you uh, this coming Lord's Day, this Sunday. All right, awesome. Well, God bless. See you guys later.